you sweep it and it will come again. So it's part of riding and racing in the desert, in desert environments, isn't it? The sand being at the edges, it's always going to be there. Yeah, it's, it's very dusty. It looked really dusty. It's the sort of thing they've probably swept, but you just got that dust yeah. sitting on the road. The only real way to get across, get rid of it, is a, either a big rainstorm or to go and wash it off. But in this part of the world, water is not uh, a readily mm. available resource and doesn't fall out of the sky very often. So, no. I mean, you've got to know the conditions. When you're racing in these desert races in the, the, the Middle East in the early part of the season, you do know that a lot of the corners are susceptible to, to sand and dust and they're going to be very slippery. So if you're flying around the outside thinking, I'm making up a lot of positions, just cool your jets a little. So these are the final five kilometres of the opening stage. Stage one of the Alula Tour, the newly named Saudi Tour in its fourth edition, in its current guise. And we have nine world teams here who are locked on trying to make the most of this at the front end. Coffin is right in the middle with the white sleeves red top. Left hand side of those new jerseys of DSM Fermanic Post NL, the Dutch team. Then alongside them, Tudor Pro Cycling, the uh, second division team with the red helmets who have Arvid De Klein, their Dutch sprinter, right at the back of that spring, a string even, locked and loaded, ready to go. Where are Sudar Quickstep and Tim Malier? They were doing an awful lot earlier, Robbie, and they just very easy to get washed away and I, I think quick uh, pseudo quick step here are looking at a slightly smaller lead out train so it'll be more a case of uh, van lerberger and tim malia just sticking together sitting a little bit deeper in that peloton just waiting for that opportunity really late and i think might just be one of them sitting there right in the middle so we see john deegan cole now right down at the back the road captain of dsm Furmanic postanel yeah, it's interesting, Robbie, that we now, I guess, I would probably say the same thing, think about John Degenkorb as a road captain. He is also an incredibly fine sprinter in his own right. He's right at the back of the string, so if he wins this one, I'd be amazed. But, um, you know, there's life in the old dog just yet in John Degenkorb, isn't there? Yeah, there certainly is. I think he's much more focused on the classics and having another crack at Paris-Roubaix yeah, rather yeah. than getting himself into, into the bunch. I think if you go back a, a, to... 10, 12, even 15 years ago, that John Deegan Colby was going to be up there in every bunch sprint. He sort of morphed, like we have seen a lot of riders over the years, into a bit more of a classics guy and a less of a sprinter. But it's really ramping up here now at the front. Sudal Quickstep now got a rider into second position. But it's uh, Q36.5 hovering up around the front as well. Yeah, let's not forget they have, within that final kilometre, a really tight turn as well, and a dog leg back on itself as well, all within the final K. So it's quite a technical run-in too. These are the last two and a half kilometres of stage one. Uno X now coming into the party, thinking probably about Soren Van Schold, but they've got Erlen Blicker as a good option as well. Van Schold sits third wheel there, the tall rider in that red jersey. Very red now of Uno X. They're always well organized, aren't they, Uno X? They always get themselves to the front at the right time in numbers and not always had the fastest spread of it to finish it off, but they've got a really good lead out train. A lot of big, strong riders able to just pull things in a line and keep themselves right at the front. Robbie, uh, Dylan Krunewegen is freestyling here. He appears to be he's about, he's about eighth or ninth wheel back, but he's by himself. I think he's got a teammate on his wheel, but it appears to me that Krunewegen is floating around doing his own thing. Yeah, well, he should have Mezgetz with there him. There is, is Grunewagen, and he's on the wheel of ah. Luka Mezgetz. They yeah. are like a tandem. They are absolutely inseparable normally. So Grunewagen, he's just following that wheel of Mezgetz. No, he's just going to keep surfing up. Here comes Merlier with Van Lerberger on the right-hand side of the screen in the blue and white of Sudal Quickstep. So they're making their charge now. They're going to get tracked now. Oh, Grunewagen, bit washed away. Yeah, he's lost Mezgetz as well. In fact, Tim Malir, almost as if he was listening to you, Robbie, has got on to Luca Mezgetz's wheel as well. Here's that dog leg. It's not too bad, but this is the last time we take it, so a bit more pressure on with that car park there too. Uh, all around it safely, thankfully. Let's look at the damage that's been done by the acceleration out of that turn, though. Final kilometre. They've gone under the Flam Rouge. I think it was just let's look for it. Sometimes they move around. Um, and a bit of a split in there too. Luka mm. Mezgetz has got Dylan Krunewegen back in position though, Robbie, no. by the looks of it. No, no, that's another teammate. They've lost Krunewegen at the oh. moment. He's a lot further back in the middle, Krunewegen. So he's lost his two teammates. Mezgetz is right up there, but... Uh... Yeah, I can see uh, Julian Simon. is Luka Mezgetz. Uh, Jason Tesson is being brought up as well. Tesson just sitting behind Moschetti there as well. UAE have got... Uh, who's that in there? 
Uh, Juan Sebastian Milano, of course. Now, there's a guy who could win. We've not even mentioned him so far with the number 16 on his back. And UAE have got a good lead out for Milano here as well. Juan Sebastian Milano sitting third wheel. This is the uh, the perfect lead out, really, for UAE team members. Milano on the inside. Um, we can see, it looks like Kasper van Uden in the middle. Is that van Uden in the middle? It's going for this as it is. Uh, Juan Schold as well. Tim Malia on the left-hand side. Can Malia come round van Uden? Oh, my oh. gosh, that was close on the line. Dylan Kronenbegel on the right may have just dipped for that, Robbie. Just. Oh, just <laughs> Closest race of the season so far. <laughs> completely wow. boxed in Grunewagen. Yeah, actually got there. This will be good. There's Grunewagen on the left-hand side up the barriers. Gets right up on to the wheel of UAE. But then he just chooses to go inside. Straight yep. up the middle from DSM is Kasper van Uden. Look at Grunewagen right in the middle. He says, right, there's my gap. Goes, gets to him, misses. Van Uden hangs on. Yeah. Yeah, Van Uden looking like he's got it then. It was Dusan Rejovic again in this race. Up on the outside, Dusan Rejovic came up. I think he might have got top three there, ah. Rejovic, as well. Wow, Van Uden yeah, did a great no sprint down the, the middle of the road, didn't he? Sorry, Robbie, go on. Yeah, yeah no, was, I mean, a brave. He opened it up, he went for it, hit the front, and he was getting attacked from all sides. And Grunewagen <laughs> just ran out of road. Arthur de Clam was coming on the left of screen late as well. There was sort of six across the road. But Van Uden... Uh, he wasn't going the fastest anymore, but he put himself in the best position. He fended off all those who had already hit the wind. And then as he just moved across, Grunewagen saw his chance, came through the gap. Yeah, but he could see that from that angle.